Hey folks, um, I'm at a camp in a hammock tonight for the first time and what I'm hoping that this is going to do for me is to to have the flexibility to to kind of freeform, to kind of not worry about hotels, Airbnbs, wherever I'm staying. Um, I'll have more options, especially in the rural places I like to go kayak fishing. Um, where I don't have to travel as far. I get to sleep and, and stay closer to where I'm gonna fish the next morning. Uh, so follow along and see how this goes. I know the weather situation is, is a challenging first night out. So I will be bookending this, this camping out in a hammock with uh, two fishing trips. Uh, today I'm going to to fish the upper Juniata River and tomorrow after I camp out at it, it's someone's it's someone's yard it's somebody's somebody who basically registered um, on a um, a network of people that offer up their their property here's a field go do your thing to boondockers and boondocking really just means people that camp out of their truck and um, it's called boondockers welcome uh, and it's also linked to a network and a, a subscription you pay an annual subscription uh, to harvest host which harvest hosts are usually businesses like farms and wineries and, and breweries and you know, rural businesses that have land that like people to come and, and, you know, buy their wine, buy their, you know, their cheese, their produce, whatever it is that they do. Um, but they're also part of this, this network of, you know, of places that you can pull in with your RV, uh, or in my case, pickup truck and hammock. And I can stay at any of these because I've paid the annual subscription. It, it cost me nothing. The subscription that I paid was basically, it's, it's Harvest Host, right? And then you add on Boondockers Welcome. I think I paid like 130 bucks total. And it, you know, that is, that's basically, um, less than one hotel stay um, in many cases so the freedom that gives you to go have adventures is really the thing that I'm after and I'm hoping that the <laughs> that I like sleeping in the hammock I've already slept in it three nights I was at Jody Queen's house but that's indoors and the challenging situation that I will have tonight is crazy wind we've had a massive storm come through here and uh and dump a bunch of rain in fact the juniata may be blown out by the time i get there we'll see i'll look at the gauges here in a minute um it, it's been up and and it was down yesterday but i think it's climbing back up um but the tail end of the storm is a lot of wind that's that's going to be tonight and into tomorrow um and some more rain there's more rain coming so i've chosen a very challenging um uh, night to to do this for my first time so we'll see how it goes I'm gonna hop out and show you just an update of the little of the streams that are along the side of my route coming down here. We got a lot of rain in a short period of time, and these this is the mud that's rolling in. So I'm thinking that. I gotta hurry up and get to the Juniata and fish some mid-river obstructions. I'm thinking maybe like some, uh, I don't know, some bridge abutments. 
but our creek mouths is, is usually a very good productive pattern but not with that level of mud flowing in. I, I think the lake may be the better bet the next two days but we'll see I'm hoping to have a brief window of, of fishing in the Juniata this afternoon before they really open up the um, open up the dam. All right, I've arrived, and I think yesterday was my window to fish this river. <laughs> they uh, they clearly opened up the uh, the dam from the rains last night. Are just yeah, the rains last night really pushed it up. I know I crossed uh, one of the larger creeks um, coming up here and it was it was up out of the out of the banks. This isn't out of the banks and maybe there's a spot here or there that are, that's fishable like pockets like that. Should I try it? I'm tempted. So, I guess I like a challenge. I can tell you if I can find an eddy, there's going to be a whole lot of fish in it. <laughs> the question is, how much higher is this going to get? Like, is this just the beginning of a much bigger rise? And, like, you know, my opportunities to even hold position are rapidly decreasing. I don't know. So before we get started, I want to show this boat briefly. Uh, it's it's just a prototype for innovative sportsmen. I designed this one to uh, to be super fast. That's where it has that long tail and uh, it tapers off before you get to the back. And that actually got this boat up to 7.6 mile per hour on flat water. But I'm excited for its length and its ability to uh, to river fish and to charge upstream through rapids. And some might look at this and be like, oh, it's too much boat. It can't be maneuverable. Uh, because of the rocker, but you can't really see it at an angle, but the front scoops up hard and the back actually scoops up. You just can't see it unless it's sitting on flat water. It acts like a much shorter boat than what it is because of that rocker, but also because of the um, the fact that inflatables sit on top of the water instead of down in it. But yeah, this will be my first time putting it in a river. So I was at Five Mountain Outfitters yesterday doing a boondock dealer visit, and I picked up another one of these. Uh, this is the, the Thunderhawk Sergeant. It's a three quarter ounce uh, lipless crankbait. Um, you might have seen me do some video on it after uh after icast last year ran into john ost and he's like you got to check this out and two unique things about it is when it comes to rest on the bottom it stays tail up like this the other part that i really like is that the the hook ties swivel this one's maybe not broken in but you can you can see right there that that is freely spinning and what that does is when you have a hooked fish um, they got a very low likelihood of getting unhooked so in water this muddy i don't know how far i'm going to be able to retrieve this thing but you know i, I might vertical jig uh, you know where those bridge pilings are see what happens the finesse bait i'm going to start with is is one of my heavier finesse jigs i think that one may be close to 3 8 ounce um, 
you know, tied with the hair and the round rubber and the crinkle cut silicone, but the bait, the soft plastic is actually the, the uh, I think it's a 4.2 inch trick shots. Um, again, it's increasing the bait's presence in the water. Uh, usually I will go with the bat wings, but you know, I, I feel like the visibility isn't really, um, it, it is hindered. So you have to speak to their lateral line and that big tail kind of flopping up off the bottom should get their attention from a distance. And obviously scent always increases the bait's presence when they get in close and they <laughs> give it a sniff. So I just got a good whack on it and it seemed to just pull, pull a little bit on the tail and I missed the fish so I'm shortening the whole length of the, uh, the trick shots worm. Hopefully that way they can suck the whole thing in. I got this bridge piling behind me it just with good reason makes me very nervous. But yeah, we're we're doing the opposite of what I said at the beginning of this. I was like, yeah, we need to increase the profile. Well, I just decreased it some because I missed a bite. Hmm. He was right there. So nothing off the bridge pilings. I did get one bite on a jig that I missed. I think he just grabbed the tail. And uh, I'm gonna move upstream. I don't know how far, but it's this is a handful, especially with the wind. Should probably slink up that bank, maybe this one. Just to not be right in the middle of the river where the uh, where the wind can really blast you but there's another bridge up here i don't know if i'm gonna make it with this amount of flow we'll see huh. something coming downstream can i catch it He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Where's my fish? Woo! Hey, I took some trash out of the river. Maybe that's some uh, good karma. Oh, oh, I'm in a tight, tight spot. Oh gosh. Oh, that was a good fish. It is a good fish. Oh, man. Can I get you up? Yes. 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 I'm getting here. I'm getting sucked back into some rough conditions. Oh. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all I had to do. Pick up a little trash. Oh. All right. This is on a spinner bait that I tied up with bucktail. Kind of some counter shading, some white bucktail that I've harvested myself, along with some yellow and uh, that I put on top. That's a good one. But I'm in a tight, tight little area. I, I, I'm a little worried about how I'm getting back out of here. I mean, it's flooded up into the woods and, whew, yes, 19 and a quarter. Beauty. All right, good karma. <laughs> good karma from uh, picking up trash. 19 and a quarter on the spinner bait. Gosh, that feels good. 
right, nice 19 and a quarter inch here on the Juniata, which is currently starting to flood out of its banks. Spinner baits and really just diving into some kind of snaggy stuff all around. I'm uh, I'm up in the woods catching Juniata smallmouth. See ya. Yeah. All right, that was fun. Uh, it's dangerous in here though, and it's starting to rain. I'm gonna take this camera down and just film the rest there as long as it's raining. Um, but yeah, that feels good to get that, get one good one in. Yes. So this sort of dead ends up there. I can't get any further. I mean, that's just, yeah, I think this fish is in here because and he was right back here coming out of that current seam. Uh, they push up in here, I think, because when it floods, it washes food out of the woods. And, and I don't know, hopefully there's another couple fish in here. But when the river comes up, the river gets in the woods, they go foraging in the woods. All right, I have gone up in this as far as I possibly can. Um, I'm at the point where I need to take a U-turn. I don't have a whole lot of room to do it, but this boat is super maneuverable. It's long, but maneuverable. That fish was up here on the right, and you're about to see how narrow a spot I came up through to get to her. But I came up through this little narrow area here, which really gave me no, no room for air. I had to have a lot of control coming up through. I don't think I can really fish it effectively but in one direction, which is the way I was going up through there. All right, let's keep moving up, see what else we find out here. So, this is a bit unnerving. I'm barely creeping up through this at full, full throttle with a torpedo, but it's doing it. And I don't think that, that any of my other boats would be doing it. 7.6 mile per hour in flat water equates to being able to climb up through crazy current, the kind of bouncy waves that are that are out here and all the turbulence. I think this is the only boat I'm doing. I'm advancing upstream with that motor. It's the only way I'm doing it. So the design, as far as I'm concerned, I'm happy with it because I don't think I'm doing this with the 1436 or any other boat for that matter. I've had three hits today. Mm. The spinnerbait fish, and two of them on this, on this finesse jig. And I didn't feel the hits. Like I just felt movement, and then I missed them. In I think in both cases. And there's a difference in how they hit something that looks like a bait fish profile and a craw. And man, the bat wings are most definitely a craw profile and they hate it hate it hate it hate it hate it they're so mad at it mm. so i'm going back to the bat wings because i want them to feel it go whack i want to i want to feel that hit haven't felt that hit 
felt the aftermath, which is the spit, I'd rather feel the hit than the spit. Now I'm gonna feel the hit. Just bat wings are so powerful. Tough, tough, tough. I really thought I would get something more than that one that one jig bite in that creek mouth. Um, but it is muddy and I don't know. It's a, I, I think I'm gonna head up. There's another bridge. I don't know if I will actually reach that other bridge. Some really swift current in between here and there. up to that bridge. If I don't see anything worthwhile, I'm going to tap out. Alright, I'm not seeing much in the way of current breaks. And uh, I got bigger stuff coming down. And it's raining. And I worry about these uh, strainers, all these trees out here. I think I need to back off, get back to the vehicle, and uh, be glad for the one fish I caught. It should be a quick ride back down. Let's see how quick I get. Well, right now, I'm doing 7172 without the power on. And uh, I don't know. Let's get some serious speed going. It makes me nervous. It was upper 12s for sure. Um, yeah, it's a lot of water. I wonder what the water that's evacuating out of Raystown is gonna do for for the fishing tomorrow. Uh, for sure, anytime there's there's water flushing and and you know just water movement in in a lake setting. Usually that means good feeding, so I'm hoping um, I'll hit it in the morning after I do this this uh, stay in the hammock overnight. I gotta set it up to make sure that uh, I stay dry and warm. We'll uh, we'll head in that direction. Start doing that now. Let's take a look at the gauge. Yeah, I think they uh, they opened a bunch of gates. So I've walked, well, drove first and then walked to where the Frankstown branch, which is rolling mud, 
and the Raystown branch, which is rolling but clear lake water where they come together. And this is this is sort of where they they join. Um, you know, the the water that's out here has the benefit of having an entire lake to knock out whatever whatever sediment rolls in. That's why that is clean and green, but still high. And this side is dirty brown, you know, from the recent rains. I always kind of think it's interesting to, to go to the place where you see the, the two different, um, two different waters come together. I'm gonna fish it here for a minute and then uh, head on up to the, uh, the boondocking host. Right off the ramp. Guess that clean water makes a difference. <clears throat> All right, so I've already met with the Boondockers welcome host. Uh, real nice guy by the name of John, and uh, he's also a paddler, so we've talked paddling a little bit. Uh, but it's time for me to set up the drifter. I'm gonna walk you through step by step um, what's involved in setting this up in a way that I'm gonna stay warm and dry this evening and be able to sleep in this hammock. So this sleeve holds the frame. We'll go ahead and take all those pieces out. Uh, you're gonna look for these end pieces, which are connected. You have one of these at either end. So I will lay one of them here, one of them here on the other side. They're either open like this and they have these holes or they have another one of these inner pieces where you're either going to have the hole or you're going to have this little button that connects into another one like this. Yep, just like that. So let me line these up and get them put together. I will show you. In the middle, there is this strap that you want to put over the inner tube, connecting just the very middle portion of the entire frame. Uh, what that's going to do is to keep the whole thing from doing the splits. So once you have the whole frame put together like that, you're going to want to grab the fabric portion, which is hiding in here. I'll put the sleeve somewhere else for now. And its, it's pocket kind of contains the whole thing. This, is, this little pocket's going to be in the middle, and this is where I'm going to put things I need when I actually go to bed. So on either end, you have these, these carabiners that clip to the end of the frame, and then these ropes. The ropes are kind of adjustable. If you want it tighter or looser, uh, there's basically a square knot in there that you can undo, tighten or loosen it, making this, this loop longer, or a bigger loop or a smaller loop. Um, there's another quick way you can make an adjustment with how tight it is, I'll show you here in just a minute. But you're taking the carabiner and just snapping it on to that middle piece. I'm going to show you on the other side a different way to do this that eats up some of the length of the hammock itself, thus making it a little bit tighter. Um, you do want it fairly tight. You really don't want a big sag on it. And one way to keep it tighter is instead of just 
clipping clipping it here like I did on the last one you can go around the outside and it just eats up a little bit of the length you clip that like that okay that part of it only takes about two minutes once you're once you've practiced it so insulation is pretty critical and I'm using something I've had a very long time that's a thermarest um, I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and uh, I can't wait to sleep on this not on the ground so this just sort of spreads things out and uh, it makes a nicer base for you a wider base once you get in it to sleep so next thing we're going to put on there is a bug net and not so much because it's buggy because uh, it's not yet it's still a little bit chilly um, but we're going to put this on there so that we have an under quilt or a it's actually another sleeping bag that i'm opening up it's going to go underneath it. I'm going to explain under quilting in just a moment. All right, with the bug net in place underneath, I'm going to grab the sleeping bag, which is going to be the one that goes underneath the hammock and provides insulation without being compressed. You're not putting it on top where you're going to sit. You're going to put it in between the hammock that you're going to sit on and the bug net that's underneath. And that pocket of air is really what's going to insulate you from the bottom. So I'll be honest and tell you that the way that that's set up to me doesn't seem very evenly applied, but I got in it the other day and once I scooted around, I was able to get most of that, uh, that under quilts underneath me. So it takes some scooching around and figuring it out. Now we're ready for the rain fly. This is one that is by Eno, but I've modified it uh, with some help actually our our upholstery division in uh, at boondocks added some little pouches to it so it fits neatly on the frame and i really like how that's come together i'll set these tent stakes aside and we'll we'll come back to those just briefly here's here's the end of the rain fly and we've added this little triangular pouch here which the end of that frame kind of tucks up in there fits very neatly on there you do need to kind of lift this end to scooch the two the two points towards each other and then that pouch it's on there nicely creating a good peak good strong taut peak across the top there stick out the fly So the ground is wet and I did bring this. This is the mud hole, which is our, the boondocks kind of boot tray. And I figured I needed something underneath me 
other than a tarp. This is just a quicker setup. So just kind of throw that underneath there. Then I got a dry place to set whatever. For sure my boots, but some other things as well. So at this point, all that's left is my uh, zero degree goose down mummy bag, which I will set up in there. I'm also going to take in case I do get cold. Um, I got a knit cap and I got this neck gaiter that uh, should help keep me nice and toasty warm in there. So there it is, and now we've got a good, good rain going. Just out that fly. Uh, we'll kind of duck underneath here, and I'll kind of show you this cramped sort of area. I got my pillow jammed there. It's really hard to show you in this kind of confined little area, but you know, that's the hammock. The bug nets both over it and under it. You have the under quilt is tucked in here. Right? Uh, there's my hat, my neck gator. Thermo rest is keeping it nice and wide. But yeah, one end to the other. That's what we're looking like. And I got dry tray to uh there is one more thing i need to put there let me grab that and uh, i'll be right back so john was nice enough to leave his his back door open he says you can use the restroom if you need to uh but you never want to assume that your your boondocker is welcome like you you got to take care of that and i did a video on this um but everything i need is there I'm going to take one thing out of it and set it underneath there. So, I'm in here, and now the contortions begin. I want to say when I set this up in the yard the other day, I had a better peek here. This is kind of coming down on me a little bit. Hmm. I gotta figure that out. But yeah, I'm in here. Um, I usually straddle it when I sit down on the, the drifter hammock. But in this configuration, I gotta sit on it sideways. Put your feet on one side and you, you sit down. The the um, thermarest certainly helps with that, having a wider base to uh, plant your butt on. But um, yeah, well, other than this being closer than I like it, um, I'm comfortable. Hope I stay warm enough. I think I should. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go to bed. See you in the morning. All right, that actually worked out really well. Um, it's, it continued to rain. The wind has been crazy. And uh, I at no point rolled over and thought, man, I'm cold, which is pretty much, you know, the, the constant experience I had last time my tent camped. Um, I can... I can kind of feel where the under quilt stops, like it kind of scrunched up and, and you know, down where my, my toes are is a little bit beyond it. And my heels down there are, are a little bit cool. And if I scoot my knees in like this, it's like, yep, immediately I can feel uh, the warmth. So one of the challenges is keeping the under quilt spread out in a way that you know you're you have 100% coverage. Uh, but the under quilt makes all the difference in the world. Um, 
The wind has been insane though. Like the wind is, has shook this and it's howling. It's gonna be miserable out there on, on Ray's town. <laughs> Another challenging day of fishing, but um, this absolutely worked. I'm, I'm happy. Like this, this is better than a tent. Um, but as soon as I came out of the mummy bag a little bit, I can feel, you know what? I've been warm, like really warm. But as soon as like my arms come out of it, I realize it's been really warm and this air is really cold. So it's a good setup. I'm happy. Um, I'm a little bit hesitant to get out because <laughs> it is so cold, but it's time to get moving. Go find a launch and maybe me catch a few fish. <laughs> this is good though. I'm having second thoughts about launching. Like, it looks okay now, but every once in a while, there are gusts that I feel are, I don't know, 45. Um, just crazy, crazy gusts. Let me see if I can get this forecast to show up. Yeah, this is the closest town. It says it's about 14 mile an hour west, northwest with uh, 33 mile an hour gust. I really feel like it was, I don't know. It, it, yeah, that was an hour and 15 minutes ago. I, you know, it's, hmm, do I do this? Like, that wind forecast on the bay is a no-go for sure. I have more topography, I have you know, higher, I'm in the mountains and that should break it up, which it does where you'll have, you just listen to it. You'll, you'll have five, 10 minutes where it's just, you know, a steady 15, but every once in a while it really gets you. Let me see if I can figure out the right direction. Go find a cove that is somewhat protected I'm a launch, take it, you know, take it easy in here at first and then uh, head out and see what I can, I don't know. I, I don't think I wanna go far if I go. I think I'm gonna go though. Should I go? Probably not. All right, I am going, but I'm taking the precaution of switching from my bibs to the full dry suit just in case I end up in the water. Um, I want to give myself, I don't know, I just, I want to be covered. And, um, yeah, 
know, the air temperature isn't horrible. I'm going to tell you it's probably 45, 45-ish. Um, that water temp, I know, is, is not that. So I did all that rigging down at dugout. I got no power. I don't blame the rigging. I think what's going on is the battery that I had was underpowered for the whole system. It did work in the shop. A lot of times when you have your batteries and you leave them outside overnight over several nights that are cold, it just it just drains it. You don't have the full charge going in. And uh, that's something I gotta figure out. Um, maybe a bigger battery. I'm not really sure, but I think what I might do, take some of this extra weight back to the truck, unload it, and just fish with uh, pounding the bank and, and looking at what, you know, what's in front of me. Probably, you know, just working some, uh, working the length of some laydowns with a jig, with a spinnerbait. I don't know, but I, it it's some extra weight and extra room that I think I gotta unpack it anyway so I'm gonna go deal with that bummer so it's sort of crazy that like you'll have moments like this where there's absolutely no wind and then you know a minute later it's just blasting you absolutely just bearing down on you with something that's moving your boat sideways. It's very erratic here up in the mountains. move up where I got one long bank to really tuck in. I think I like this one way over here. Actually, let's try it. I want it on this side. Then move over. So I've been power fishing shallow on wood with the spinnerbait and nothing happened in there. Um, Power fishing should always be your first try because if they're going to chase, you get to cover a lot more water and then you get to find the greater concentrations of fish. Um, I am changing the kind of power fishing I'm doing, really just the depth. I mean, totally different um, profile and, and what it does, but... I'm changing from shallow wood spinnerbait bait fish to I'm gonna put a crankbait on and I'm I'm tired on heavier leader. I'm jumping up to 20 because uh, I don't know it's it's gonna it's gonna take some abuse. Um, but you know some days they're up shallow and usually in the spring it's your warmer days that you know. Maybe don't have quite this much wind. I'm not saying they don't come shallow on days like this. I think they do at certain times, but I, I've i tried it and, and nothing's happening. So I'm coming out from the bank a little bit, maybe work some of these points, crankbait. It is absolutely crankbait time. Let's grind the bottom, see if I get some reaction bites. Yep, the darker colored one. All right, that. So what I'm gonna give it a try.
There are beaver huts and then there's beaver mansions. So here and there I'm seeing shad about that long on the shoreline and it's been it's been shorelines that are protected from the wind. I think they're I don't know maybe they're roughed up from being out there and they're taking refuge up in here. I do know that this lake is uh, is fuller than it should be. Like there's more water coming into this than is coming out of it. So I'm gonna get the dome in the water, see if I can show you these shad. been doubting what am I doing out here all day and it's I don't know it's it's getting on to four o'clock I put in it eight something and uh, really haven't gotten much going until this one but when I'm in doubt I go with the jig and uh, I after doing a lot of power fishing decided all right let's let's take my little black jig put it to use and uh, finally got one uh, it's it's been tough 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 um, you know it, it, this Highland Reservoir is something that is is gonna be a good bit behind in terms of the seasons everywhere else uh, just because and, and if you look around I mean we don't at home we got green on the trees and uh, up here it's like you barely have buds so higher elevation a little bit slower to to get going but uh yeah it's a nice eh. yeah you're right on 18 so nice 18 inch large mouth i am pleased to not have a skunk day nice thanks to the jig spot I've seen. Oh, there's one out in the middle. It's uh it just keeps changing direction. You think that you've you found a spot to uh to hide from it and it'll be calm and you think I'm good like right here I'm good two minutes before that water spout formed there off of that point and then kind of recollected out in the middle I was being slammed into this and uh, it's just it's played havoc with um, <laughs> with boat positioning feeling the bite everything has been been tough 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 today and uh, you know there you think you can hide from it you think all right this is the bank because it's blowing on that bank well, wait 10 minutes, it'll be blowing on this one too. So, but yeah, water spouts are a little, little scary. All right, I'm heading in. Um, man, I, I don't know that I could have dialed up two more difficult condition days to fish first the river and then uh, the lake here. Uh, with the wind we had today, um, really made it difficult to feel the bite with the finesse and I really never got any any powerfish uh, presentation going but did manage to get one same thing yesterday having a river blow out on you and and having the difficulty of holding position and and um, and having some of that muddier water really uh, made it difficult again I persevered got one one good one, um, 
but this trip was less, I must say it was less about the fishing. Uh, it was more about the testing, hey, let's go out in some sort of difficult conditions uh, and do this, do this hammock camping, this boondocking. Uh, and I'm glad, I'm glad I've, I had a really windy, rainy night that was cold to see, hey, is this, does this work for me? And uh, I feel like it does. If I can handle last night, um, I I'm gonna do this a whole lot more. And the fact that I've already paid for the year subscription of Harvest Host and, and Boondockers Welcome, uh, and, and I'm sure there'll be some other situations where I use, um, I don't know, just public land. Public land or, I, I tell you what I really wanna do is to, to bring the drifter with me on the river, on the kayak, and just camp on islands. Uh, I did that years ago with tents, and um, you know, it, it rains, and you get you get the water that comes in the tent, and you're miserable, and it's tough to find a flat area with no roots. And with a hammock, you don't have to worry about it. So it's uh, I, I'm happy with it. But I'm gonna pull my camera down uh, and end this video before it blows it off the stand. Crazy, crazy wind. Um, hey, thanks for watching. If you're into the, the boondocking content, uh, there is a playlist now on boondocking. I will be growing that as I uh, share more of my experiences doing it. Thanks for watching. See ya.